So yesterday was the 2022 NHL trade deadline, and it was by far the biggest in NHL history. From 12 a.m. to 3 p.m., there was a total of 33 trades, which is a number that the NHL has not seen before, and it beat out 2020's number, which was the biggest up to this point. From one-on-one -on -one death trades to trades that put teams over the hump, here is your 2022 deadline day review. So for this video, so you don't have to listen to my annoying voice talk, I've separated it into different columns. I have created a table of content separated into four different columns, extensions, A-level trades, B-level trades, and C-level trades. We will most likely spend the most of our time on A-level trades and B-level trades and C-level trades and extensions don't really take that long to talk about. So we will kick off this video with extensions. Okay, so I got my trusty notebook here with all of the extensions that are needed. Let's start off with the Nashville Predators. They signed center Yachim Kondelik. I don't know if I'm saying that right. To a two-year entry-level contract. As well as that, the Arizona Coyotes signed a goaltender who really emerges a real goalie for the Coyotes this season. Karel Vejmelka, a.k.a. Veggie, to a three-year $2.725 million contract. The Boston Bruins, on the other hand, extended left wing Jake DeBrusque, who was supposed to be traded but was not, to a two-year, $4 million extension. On the other end, the Los Angeles Kings signed center Blake Lazat to a $2.1765 million extension. Uh, the Ottawa Senators signed goaltender Anton Forsberg to a three-year, $2.75 million extension. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets signed right wing Christian Reichel to a two-year, $775K extension. Uh, the Arizona Coyotes signed center Jack McBain, uh, we'll talk about him a little bit later, to a two-year entry-level contract. The New York Islanders signed right-wing Cal Clutterbuck to a two-year $1.75 million extension. We thought he was going to get traded as well. And as well as that, Zach Parise was signed to a one-year center 50 k extension. And last but not least, Philadelphia Flyers right-wing Nate Hodgson signed a one-year center 50 k extension. And we covered this in a previous video, but Hurricanes forward Yesberry Kotkaniemi was re-signed to an eight-year extension, and that was made official yesterday. That is it for extensions. Let's get into the A-level trades. For A-level trades, we have a total of six. Wait, that's five. Six A-level trades, and we'll start off with the Max Domi deal. This was the one and only three-way trade of the deadline as the Carolina Hurricanes acquired forward Max Domi, 50% retained by Columbus, and 25% retained by Florida, and defenseman Tyler Inamoto. And Florida got a 2022 sixth from Columbus, and forward Igor Korshkov. Columbus, after dealing Max Domi, Got defenseman Aiden Hereschuk. Domi definitely did struggle in Columbus, so it's going to be really interesting to see what he can do with the Carolina Hurricanes, who are a top team in the league. Moving on to trade number two here with the Ricard Raquel trade. The Pittsburgh Penguins acquired forward Ricard Raquel with 50% retained by the Ducks. In exchange for a 2022 second, forward Zach Aston Reese, forward Dominic Simone, and goaltender Kale Klang. I have talked about Raquel on this channel before, saying publicly that he is a very good goal scorer. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do with a team like the Penguins. And as for Zach Aston Reese, he's a very underrated two way player. So we'll see what he can do with Trevor Zegras and the Anaheim Ducks. Moving on here to trade number three, where we look at the Colorado Avalanche and the Montreal Canadiens, as the Avalanche acquired forward Arturi Lekkinen in exchange for defenseman Justin Baron and a 2024 second round pick. I remember back in the 2021 playoffs, Arturi Lekkinen is a very good forward. He puts in a lot of effort, and he's just underrated all in all. So this is a very good deal for not only the Avalanche, but for the Habs as well. Now on to trade number four. This one's between the San Jose Sharks and the Minnesota Wild, as the Sharks acquired goaltender Kapo Kakinen and a 2022 fifth round pick in exchange for defenseman Jacob Middleton. Kakinen has definitely had his season struggles, especially since the Winter Classic, and it's going to be interesting to see what he can do with the San Jose Sharks. And as for Minnesota, they acquired a very solid defenseman in Jacob Middleton, who is very underrated. Moving over to trade number five, this is between the New York Rangers and the Winnipeg Jets. The Rangers acquired forward Andrew Kopp in a 2023 sixth, in exchange for a 2022 second, which becomes a first if New York makes the Eastern Conference Finals, and Cop plays 50% of the games. 
And as well as that, a 2022 slash 2023 second round pick. Winnipeg has the option to choose and forward Morgan Barron. I saw a lot of Jets fans saying that they could get a first round pick for Andrew Kopp. And although this isn't technically a first round pick, it could very well turn into one. So this is a good trade for the Jets and for the Rangers as well. Kopp is an extremely underrated forward that not many people talk about. And on to the last of the A trades, the trade number six. This one's between the Minnesota Wild and the Chicago Blackhawks. Goaltender Marc-Andre Fleury headed over to the Wild with 50% retained by Chicago in exchange for a 2022 second. It will become a first if Minnesota makes the Western Conference Finals, plus Fleury wins four games in the first three rounds. Now, don't let him playing in a team like Chicago disencourage you. Fleury is still a very good goaltender, and that showed last night when they played the Vegas Golden Knights and won 3-0 in his debut. Now that'll do it for the A-level trades. Let's move on into the B-level trades. There is a lot more in here. Now let me just say as a disclaimer, there are a couple of trades in here who did not happen on deadline day exactly. They happened like two hours before, but who cares? Trade number one is between the Arizona Coyotes and the Dallas Stars, as the Arizona Coyotes acquired a 2023 fourth, which will become a third if the Stars make the playoffs, in exchange for goaltender Scott Wedgwood. Now, Dallas fixes their semi-goaltender issues by acquiring Scott Wedgwood, but don't let him playing on a bad team discourage you. He is still a very solid goaltender, and even spoke good about Arizona, which is something you do not see every day. When asked if he was open to a return to the Coyotes, Wedgwood said this, Hopefully, if the situation comes back and I can't go anywhere else, I wouldn't be opposed to talking to them again. I'm not upset with anybody. I love living here. I love the guys. The team has always been good to me. There's no hard feelings. I just want a chance to play. That is something you do not see every day in Arizona. I have the utmost respect for Wedgwood. Anyways, now moving on to trade number two. This one's between the Nashville Predators and the Seattle Kraken. We're going to start rolling through these pretty quickly. The Nashville Predators acquired defenseman Jeremy Lazone in exchange for a 2022 second round pick. Lazone is a very underrated defenseman who can really bring the physicality and the defensive work to the Predators. Trade number three involves a reunion between two teams, the Winnipeg Jets and the Seattle Kraken, as forward Mason Appleton returns to the city of Winnipeg in exchange for a 2023 fourth round pick. Trade number four is between the Washington Capitals and the Seattle Kraken, as forward Marcus Johansson is going back to Washington again in exchange for forward Daniel Sprung, a 2022 fourth, and a 2023 sixth. Now, these two players that were involved in this deal are older players and are kind of out of their primes, but it's interesting to see. Trade number five is between the Boston Bruins and the Ottawa Senators as defenseman Josh Brown and a 2022 seventh, which can become a sixth if Seneshin plays five games, is heading over to the Bruins in exchange for forward Zach Seneshin and a 2022 fifth round pick. The Bruins honor Seneshin's trade request by dealing him to the Senators and they acquire another defenseman in Josh Brown. Trade number six revolves around the New York Rangers and the Philadelphia Flyers as the Rangers acquire defenseman Justin Braun in exchange for a 2023 third round pick. Justin Braun is a very good shutdown defenseman and it'll be very interesting to see what he will add to the Rangers defense, which is kind of a bit of a struggling defense when you look at it because, you know, they got Shesterkin, who's a very good goalie. So we'll see what he does. Trade number seven is involved with the Washington Capitals and the Arizona Coyotes. As forward, Johan Larson is heading to the Capitals with 50% retained by the Coyotes in exchange for a 2023 third round pick. I've been a fan of Johan Larson for a while as a Coyotes fan, so it's unfortunate to see him go, but the Capitals are getting a very solid, probably bottom six forward in Johan Larson, who brings the effort and will bring some goals. Trade number eight is between the St. Louis Blues and the Detroit Red Wings. This is a bigger trade for a B level, as St. Louis acquires defenseman Nick Letty and defenseman Luke Witkowski, so they're upgrading their defense, in exchange for forward Oscar Sundquist, forward Jake Wallman, and a 2023 third round pick. This trade is interesting because the Blues get a shutdown defenseman in Bukowski and an underrated defenseman in Nick Letty. As well as that, the Red Wings, they get Oscar Sundquist. He's going to be a very solid center for them, and he's he's decently young too. The same with Jake Wallman, and a, that third round pick is just a third round pick. Trade number nine revolves around the Edmonton Oilers and the Montreal Canadiens as the Oilers acquire defenseman Brett Kulak 
in exchange for forward William Legison, a 2023 second and a 2024 seventh. If you were to say a week ago that Brett Kulak would be worth a second round pick, people would have thought that you were on crack. He's a very underrated defensive defenseman for now the Edmonton Oilers. So that's some good pieces there. Trade number 10 is one of the more underrated trades that happened this deadline is between the New York Rangers and the Vancouver Canucks. As forward Tyler Mott is heading over to the Rangers in exchange for a 2023 fourth round pick. Now Mott is an incredibly underrated player. He brings that effort. He can bring those goals and the assist. He's an incredibly underrated player for now the New York Rangers. Especially since they're missing a lot of depth with Sammy Blay being injured and a couple other guys. It's going to be interesting to see where Tyler Mott fits in the Rangers lineup. Trade 11 is between the Ebbets and Oilers and the Philadelphia Flyers as forward Derek Brassard heads up to Canada in exchange for a 2023 fourth round pick. Now, if I'm correct, this is Brassard's 12th team of his career and his ninth in the past six years. The man is going everywhere. Trade number 12 is between the Detroit Red Wings and the Dallas Stars as the Red Wings acquire a 2024 fourth round pick in exchange for forward Vladislav Nemestikov. This was likely a cat move for the Red Wings as Nemestikov has kind of been forgotten in the dust by many NHL fans, including myself. Trade number 13 revolves around the Seattle Kraken and the Minnesota Wild as the Kraken acquired forward Victor Rask with 50% retained in exchange for future considerations. Rask has been up and down waivers, NHL, waivers, NHL, waivers, NHL, the whole season for the Minnesota Wild, so it'll be very interesting to see what he can do with a team like the Kraken that has a lot more roster spots open. Anyways, that concludes A-level trades, B-level trades, and extensions. Let's move on to C-level trades. We'll try and go through these very quickly because most of these are either cap dumps or one-for-one -one death deals. So we have 14 more trades to go over that are C level and most of them have little to no importance at all. So I'm just going to go over them very quickly. Trade number one is between the Los Angeles Kings and the Nashville Predators as the Kings acquire defenseman Frederick Allard in exchange for forward Braden Burke. Trade number two involves the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Winnipeg Jets as the Jets acquire a 2022 seventh round pick. Winnipeg will receive this pick if Pittsburgh makes the finals plus Nathan Bilyeu who is going back the other way for Pittsburgh, plays 50% of the games. By the way, Bilio is on LTIR. Trade number three is between the Arizona Coyotes and the Winnipeg Jets as forward Brian Little on LTR, a.k.a. his contract, is heading over to the Coyotes, as well as that Nathan Smith, his signing rights, are also heading over to the Coyotes in exchange for a 2022 fourth-round pick. Trade number four revolves around the Nashville Predators and the Toronto Maple Leafs as the Predators acquire defenseman Alex Biega, in exchange for future considerations. Trade number five involves the Arizona Coyotes and the Minnesota Wild as forward Jack McBain signing rights, which there was a lot of interest revolving around him from other NHL teams, heads over to the Coyotes in exchange for a 2022 second round pick. Trade six is between the Ottawa Senators and the Winnipeg Jets as the Ottawa Senators acquire a 2022 fifth round pick in exchange for forward Zach Sanford. Trade number seven involves the New York Rangers and the San Jose Sharks as forward Nick Merkley heads over to the Rangers in exchange for Anthony Batetto. Trade number eight involves Andrew Hammond, the Hamburglar, heading over to the New Jersey Devils in exchange for Nate Schnarr heading over to the Montreal Canadiens. Trade nine involves the Calgary Flames and Chicago Blackhawks as a 2024 fifth round pick is heading over to Chicago in exchange for forward Ryan Carpenter. Trade 10 involves the Tampa Lightning and the Arizona Coyotes as Riley Nash heads over to Florida once again in exchange for future considerations. Trade 11 is between the Los Angeles Kings and the Winnipeg Jets as the Kings get defenseman Nelson Najier and the Winnipeg Jets get defenseman Marcus Phillips. Trade 12 is between the San Jose Sharks and the Tampa Bay Lightning as the Sharks get forward Antoine Morand in exchange for goaltender Alexei Melnichuk. Trade 13 involves the Colorado Avalanche and the San Jose Sharks as the Avalanche acquire forward Andrew Cogliano in exchange for a 2024 fifth round pick. And the final trade of this trade deadline is between the Calgary Flames and the Ottawa Senators as Calgary gets future considerations in exchange for goaltender Michael McNiven. And that will conclude your 2022 trade deadline review.
That'll do it for the 2022 Nordic 97 trade deadline review. There was a lot of players who weren't moved, which really surprised me. But nonetheless, that'll do it. Thank you guys for watching. For our sports line, I really do appreciate you guys to subscribe. That'd be awesome. Check out our playlist of all the trade deadline videos we've made this year. Uh, there's not a lot, but I think we've made a couple. So make sure to go check those out. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. For our sports line, I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys once again in the next video.